We don't normally make announcements at the sermon, but I would draw your attention to the insert in today's High Mass booklet. Uh, Please do take note of that. The City Council postponed item relating to parking restrictions to this Wednesday, the 22nd of August, at 10 a.m. down at City Hall, room 340. You will notice it is imperative that as many St. Thomas parishioners as possible attend the hearing to show support for the revised restrictions. Even if you don't intend to speak, uh, it is important to make as big and as visible a show of support as we can on Wednesday. Please do pay attention to that notice. It's um, a very serious and important point indeed. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. St. <clears throat> John's Christ uses incredibly incendiary language in this sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel today. So incendiary, in fact, that some people, even some of his own disciples, stopped following him because of it. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Imagine hearing this for the very first time. Imagine this without any previous experience of coming to Mass or the Eucharist. Imagine a young, perhaps educated couple attending church for the very first time in their lives, and this Sunday, this passage is read aloud to them. Imagine hearing Christ say these words directly to you. Now we know that some in the crowd took such offence at Christ that they stopped following him because he said these things. But we'll get to that next week because we hear the next section in this great Bread of Life discourse next week. It is interesting that Christ doesn't soften or temper his language in the least bit. There's not even a hint that he might be speaking metaphorically or poetically. He just doesn't say it once and then move on to other things. This is part of the great long bread of life discourse. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. If you do not, you will die. If you do, you will live forever. Christ drives home this point with clarity and repetition. We hear it as people who are churched, of course, most of us, and I think we largely let the bombshells land around us without much reaction to those stupendous bombshells that Christ speaks every now and again. I mean, of course, of course, Christ is talking about the Eucharist, about the Mass, right? We've all got that, haven't we? That's the very center of all that we do and say in this place. That's the very inspiration behind every project and ministry and program, behind every guild and um, confraternity, behind every cell and the choir and acolytes and whosoever comes to this place. Everything that happens in the parish office, everything that happens day to day in this parish is all inspired by this one place, this miraculous place where we receive the very body and blood of Christ himself and we offer to God ourselves, our souls and our bodies. We've got that. I hope. The Mass is the living centre of life. We hear these words against a lifetime of hearing. We're used to hearing them. And of course, sometimes familiarity can breed contempt. But we need to hear afresh. Take, eat, 
this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. For us, they maybe have lost their offensiveness in 2012, but Christ didn't launch these rhetorical bombshells so that they'd fizzle out with time. They are meant to carry the same weight and the same value and shock um, value as they did at the very time of Christ's utterance. No, I think it's clear that Christ was deliberately stirring the pot on purpose. He wanted to say things that challenged people, even to the point of having to decide that they'd have to leave. One thing is clear here. Christ isn't about people-pleasing. He's not about glad-handing and smoothing out the wrinkles so that everyone can go away happy and come again happy. He's not just saying and doing just about anything to pack the house. But Christ, following Christ, means sometimes you need to say the hard thing. Sometimes there is no win-win situation where everyone goes home happy. Sometimes people get mad and they leave. And sometimes, tragically, they never come back. And all because you said something like, no, this is God's church, this is God's place, and all of God's children are welcome here. Or no, their love is a gift of God, and we should celebrate and rejoice in that, and it will be celebrated here in God's church, regardless of color, of creed, of orientation. Or we may hear the words, eat my flesh and drink my blood, for my life, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Sometimes the truth is easy and good and maybe even fun. Sometimes everyone can stand and cheer about it. But there are those moments when the truth is hard, when we have to stand up for the message of the gospel. And if we don't stand up for the message of the gospel on Wednesday morning at the city council, then we will see our numbers decrease and decrease and decrease in this place until there may be no church left at all, no viable church at any rate. But there are those moments when truth is hard, and to some, truth is offensive. But speaking the truth might just mean that some won't like you anymore. They'll stop coming. They'll pull their pledge. And maybe you'll get nailed to a cross for saying those things and left to die, alone and naked. But the truth also has this remarkable quality. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free, and it brings you life in union with God. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.